Probably one of the coolest parts about the new A Plus 901-902 is the inclusion of Apple Macintosh OS X. Now, for us old geezers, a long time ago, we used to have uh, Apple Macintosh as part of the A Plus. They dumped it a long, long time ago, but now it's back. Now, I don't want to make you Windows people panic. For those of you who are not Mac people, I'm not a Mac person myself. I own a Mac, but that doesn't mean that I have a super high level of expertise. The amount of information that the A Plus is going to challenge you on is very, very small. So don't panic. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a quick overview, a quickest, lightest touch of OS X that you can possibly imagine. In fact, if you're a good Mac user, if I don't make you crabby at least twice in this episode, I'm making a mistake. Now, what I have in front of me right here is a Mac Mini. So Mac computers come in a number of different versions, uh, iMac, Mac Mini, uh, Mac Air, there's a lot of different ones out there, but they pretty much all run OS X. So OS X has been around for a long time. It's uh, gone through a number of iterations, but what's interesting is that the interface has basically stayed the same all this time. So what I did is even though I do own my own iMac, I asked my buddy Scott Jernigan who has this lovely little Mac Mini, I'm gonna borrow his system, and we're just gonna do a quick little tour of OS X. You guys ready? Let's dive in. First of all, what we have here is the desktop. All of this is the desktop. Now, what I want you to do is look across at the very top. This is what we call the menu bar. So the menu bar is actually gonna change depending on what program we have up in front in focus at any given moment. On the far left-hand side, we have what's known as the Apple menu. That never changes, that will always be there. This part will change depending on what application I have running. And then way over on the right here, these are my status menus, so I can change users if I want to, I can change the date and time, I can double check my wireless, whatever I need to do is gonna work across the top of that bar. Now, if we look down on the bottom, this is what we call the dock. And I always love this little animation. The dock is a highly customizable, kind of like a, a start bar, if you wanna use that term. And you customize this, you put the programs that you like to use a lot on here. Now. You can start any of these programs just by clicking on them. So let's say I want to start, uh, here's my calendar. So I can click this and my calendar starts. You see the little black dot at the bottom? That shows me that that thing's running. If I minimize it, you can see minimized programs are sitting way over here on this side of the dock. Okay, so those are the basic pieces. Now what I want to do is make it a little bit more complicated. As you might imagine, there's a lot more programs on Scott's Mac than just what we can see here on the dock. So if you want to get to all the applications on the system, what we're going to do is we're going to use what we call the Finder. So I'm going to take this, I'm actually going to close this. Now if you see up here, you'll see that we're currently in the Finder. The Finder is, I guess the closest analogy I could make for Windows is this is kind of like the Windows Explorer. That's not a perfect analogy, but it's fairly close. So what we do is we go over to our icon, so here's our hard drive, and we can double click on this, and we can go down to applications, and these are all the different applications that are installed on the system currently. And I just want to have a little fun here. So let's see if I can find here under utilities, there's a little program called Grapher. Now, notice that I've started Grapher up. Look what happens here, because now, because Grapher has the focus, this Grapher menu is currently up front. So I'm just going to run, I'm going to throw up some interesting little image, ta-da, there we go. So now we've got Grapher running. Now if I want to, so let me get my uh, calendar going again. Now what I want you to do is watch very carefully, I've got two programs. So right now the calendar is in the focus, so he's going to be in charge, but watch what happens the moment I click over here. Bonk. So now the menu bar changes to reflect whoever has the focus at any given moment. Okay, so Macs work pretty well like that. The one issue that we run into is that if you don't have room in the dock and you don't wanna go dig, how do you find stuff? And Macs do a great job with this with a wonderful little tool called Spotlight. Now, I could click and get to Spotlight, but I want to make sure you're aware of something. So down here on my keyboard is what we call the command button. 
The command button is almost kind of like another control button. It allows us to hold down the control, or I'm sorry, in this case, hold, hold down the control and then hit some other button, and it allows us to do a little bit more. So make sure you can recognize the command button. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna hold down the command button and hit space and take a look what just popped up on my screen. This is Spotlight Search. I can type in, let's say I'm looking for Microsoft Word. So you can see it's already found Word as well as Word applications and stuff like that. I can search, I can type in text and it will search all through my computer for a text. I can even type in one plus one and it'll tell me the answers too. So it's a very, very powerful search tool, uh, application launcher, the whole shebang. So all I have to do is hit enter here, hit return. Sorry, I want to use the right Mac terms. And here comes Word. So I look something our buddy Scott hasn't used Word yet, but the beautiful part about Spotlight is it just simply comes up and it's a great tool for that. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm a Windows guy. And the first time I saw a Mac, I, would, I, I want to look at it from a tech standpoint. I mean, I want to know, where's the control panel? How do I create users? How do I change screen resolution? How do I, you know, do the nerd stuff? And to do that in OS X, you have to head over to your little Apple menu over here on the left, and you go to System Preferences. System preferences is as close to control panel as you're going to get in the Mac world. And if you take a look here, you can see stuff that you would see on uh, Windows configurations such as desktop and screen saver. Here's power management, energy saver, users and groups, parental controls. All the same type of configurations that you'd see in a Windows environment are under system preferences on a Mac. Oh, good. Let's minimize some of this stuff. I do not want to save my beautiful Taurus. One of the interesting things about a Mac is that, well, I'm, I'm old, okay? And a billion years ago, the first generation of Mac operating systems before OS X were pure graphical user interfaces. As a Windows guy, I'm always wanting to get to a command prompt to do stuff, you know? There's a, how do you get to the command prompt? And with these early versions of Macs, the, the Mac people would look at me and they're like, what are you talking about? There is no command prompt. I'm like, come on, there's gotta be. Well, when OS X rolled out, OS X is really based on the Unix operating system, and Unix certainly has a command prompt, better use the Unix term here and say terminal, and starting with OS X, this has been around for a long time now, you now have a terminal within the Mac environment. So to get to a terminal, I guess I could click on stuff and find it, but I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, the spotlight again. And terminal. Yep, there it is. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is an honest to Pete Unix terminal. So if you know your Unix commands, and if you don't know your Unix commands, keep watching these episodes because there are Linux commands, Unix, Linux commands on the A+, and you'll get to know them. But what is very cool is that you can get to a terminal within the Apple world. Okay, I know this was a quick and dirty little tour of OS X. We've actually gone beyond what you need to know within the world of A+, but I think that even at this very, very basic level, these are things that any technician should know. These are things that you're gonna be seeing in the real world. There are Mac people out there all over the place, and they are a very excitable group of people, and it's good as a technician to be able to work with any operating system that you're gonna see in the outside world.